The time has come for a new revolution. Not a revolution of violence or control, but a revolution of the mind, the heart, and the soul. A revolution that will touch the hearts of men to let them know that they no longer have to pretend. This is a place where men get to be real because in this space they can say exactly what they feel. So men of all races unite and come in. This journey will challenge you to look deep within. So now, let the new revolution begin because it's time for a new conversation with men. Welcome to a new conversation with men where our intention is to empower men to live extraordinary lives. I'm your host, Coach Michael Taylor, and joining me today is my good friend and co-host, Arthur J. Justin. How you doing, Arthur? Hey, Mike. How you doing? It's a pleasure to be here, my friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, the intention of this show is to become a powerful, positive resource for any man who is ready and willing to live an extraordinary life. You see, if you turn on the television, the majority of the stories you'll see about men will be pretty negative. And so, this idea about creating an extraordinary life has nothing to do with race, religion, age, socioeconomic status, political affiliation. It's about a man being willing to live an extraordinary life because I believe that every man has the capacity to do so. So what we're going to be doing with this show is talking about motivation. You know, from a male perspective, I think a lot of us are maybe a little unmotivated because the roles of masculinity are changing so rapidly and a lot of men have experienced layoffs because of the economy and I think a lot of men are just well, maybe stuck. That's mm -hmm. probably a good word, mm -hmm. stuck. So today's show, we want to get you unstuck. And the way we're going to get you unstuck is by providing you with 10 keys to help you get motivated, to get and stay motivated. So, Arthur and I happen to be motivational speakers. And our job primarily is to teach, to educate, to motivate, and inspire. And so what I want to begin with, first and foremost, author, is you actually wrote a book on the topic of motivation. And so tell us a little bit about that book. Uh, yes, I did, Mike. I wrote the book Ignite the Fire Within. It only takes a moment. Let, let the audience, I don't, know if you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but Ignite, Ignite the, the Fire, fire within. within. It only takes a moment to change your life. And the reason I wrote the book, Michael, is because I understand that individuals need that extra push perhaps a sense of encouragement in order to go forward and actually be the person they desire to be, doing the things they desire to do, and having the things they desire to have. So there's already something on the inside, I call it the fire of desire, that wants to come out of the individual into their very lives. And oftentimes, someone just needs to come by to fan that, and as motivational speakers, we oftentimes get lumped in the hoo-ha-rah-rah rah type group, but as you said, that's not the case because we're actually teachers. So we come to help draw out of individuals that which is already in them, thus motivation. There's a motive. So Ignite the Fire Within is designed to help individuals uncover that motive that's inside of them that will help them see the very best life that they can desire to live. Now, on that note, some of you who are watching this, you may have a negative perception of motivational speakers. You may think that, oh, they're just full of it and they don't really live that sort of life. So I want to ask you, Arthur, as a motivational speaker. Yes. Do motivational speakers stay motivated all the time? Oh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. No okay. is the answer. And to, to just kind of help put some words around that, it's not that we don't stay motivated all the time. It's that we have to work to make sure that we're motivated just as those who we're teaching, those who we're inspiring. As I love to say, we have to do our own homework as well. We don't get a pass just because we're motivational speakers. Right. We still have to do the work as well. And just as life happens to everybody, life also happens to motivational speakers. We just tend to have a different approach to the challenges of life. Mm. We tend to have a positive mindset as we deal with the challenges of life, which helps us to be able to overcome them and also helps us to help others overcome them. Because I believe as motivational speakers, we cannot give what we don't have. Sure. So we have to work to keep ourselves filled 
and full so that we can pour into the experiences of our students and those who are taken to our teaching and our form of motivation, which is really just to help them become the very best that they can be. So long story short, no, motivation speakers <laughs> don't uh, stay motivated all the time, but we work to stay motivated so that we can serve those that we're called to serve. Well, see, I, th I think you, you touched on a key component here. As a speaker, what we have learned to do is to recognize that life happens. But it isn't what happens to you in life that matters. Mm. It's what you do right. with what happens to you right. that matters. So our job is to help you recognize that, yes, life is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And if we can provide you with some tools to support you in dealing with life happening, then you'll become more motivated. Yes. Now, what's really important that I want everyone to recognize is the title of his book is Ignite the Fire Within. And that's a very powerful point because what I know, I don't just believe this, what I know is if you're watching this show right now, you have that fire within you. Every human being has that fire within them. Unfortunately, we live in a culture that suppresses and represses that fire. And our job as motivational speakers is to ignite it. We want to light it up. We want you to get fired up about life. Because what I know is despite all the negative stuff you may see in the media, you have within you the capacity to be, to do, to have anything your heart desires. And so the intention of this show, A New Conversation with Men, is to ignite the fire in men to let them know that they have access to everything they need to live an extraordinary life. You see, what a motivational speaker does, really, is simply overcome obstacles. You ever notice that? There's a, co there's a common theme amongst motivational speakers in that they overcame some what we would consider insurmountable obstacle. And that's what inspires us. When we see those stories like an Oprah Winfrey, where she was born and how she was raised and the obstacles that she overcame mm -hmm. to become the person that she is, right. that is motivational. Yes. Because what it does is it, tax, it touches our humanness. Mm -hmm. It lets us know that there is a part of us that has that same ability. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do today is we want to share 10 keys, if you will, to help get you and keep you motivated. And so, once again, if you're watching this show, that tells me that you're already committed to living an extraordinary life. And my hope is that you'll continue to tune in and gain more of this wisdom and knowledge that we're going to be sharing on a regular basis. So, let's start with key number one in staying motivated. So, Arthur, what do you think probably one of the first thing a person has to do in order to get and stay motivated? Well, Mike, I think the very first thing that uh, people should do in order to stay motivated is turn off the television. <laughs> Don't turn the channel off right now, <laughs> but to turn off the television. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because we have so many images that are coming in through the television. And oftentimes those images are not always good. Mm -hmm. Those images tend to paint the doom and gloom of the life experience. If it bleeds, it leads. If it bleeds, it leads. So if that's where we're spending the majority of our time in front of the television, that's the movie that we're perhaps watching. And that movie ends up becoming our life experience. Mm. And we've heard it often said, CNN, constant negative news, so <laughs> forth and so on. Right. So if we're continually watching negative news, negative shows, negative information, that it's what we're going to find in our life experience and we really become unmotivated, demotivated. Chances are if you're looking for a job and if you're constantly looking at unemployment is 10%, unemployment is this, yeah. well the positive motivated person would say well if it is 10% unemployed, 90% is employed That's so right. I'll find myself in that. Mm. So let me change that a little. Rather than just turning off the television, I'll say this. Disconnect from the negative media. Mm, that really sums it up. That's good. Disconnect from the negative media. Because obviously there are some good things sure, on television. Sure, without a doubt. Yes. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to limit 
the amount of negativity that we allow to take place in our minds. Because everything starts in mind. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. So, key number one, limit the amount of negative media input. Okay? That's number one. And number two, which actually is a result of number one, right. is you have to pay attention to your thinking. So I want you to think about this. How many times do you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is you turn on the television and you look at the news. Mm -hmm. And then you see how many people got killed, mm -hmm. how many accidents there were, who got robbed. I mean, it's, it's majority of negative. Yes. So the question we have to ask ourselves are, are we constantly thinking about all the negative stuff that we're seeing in the media? Mm -hmm. And so if the answer is yes, then what we want to do is we want to change that. So there's a guy by the name of Mike Dooley. And Mike says this. He says, thoughts become things. Mm -hmm. Thoughts become things. So if we're constantly thinking negative, mm -hmm. I believe, negative things begin to show up in our lives. Right. So what we must be willing to do is shift that to positive. And one way to, to do that is to stop the negative input that we're putting in. Any comments on that? Yes, no, I agree wholeheartedly, Mike. And those thoughts do become things. And we have to pay attention to that, as we've said, is because that is really becoming our reality. That's what we are focused on as we are allowing this negative input to come in. There's something called the reticular activator system that it set the back part of the brain. So you see something and your mind now goes there. For example, you want a certain type of car, so you've gone to the car lot and you sit in it. And now perhaps you get that car. So now you start to see that car everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Well, the cars are always there, but now that you've come into possession of it, you now have a direct connection, a link, a radiation with it. So if we're taking in all of the negative, that's what's going to show up in our life experience. And if we want to see positive in our lives, well, we have to begin to think positive thoughts. You know, one wise writer said this many, many years ago to think on these things. And this inspired writer gave a list of positive things to think on. And I believe he did that because he understood that thoughts do become things. It's yes. just a matter of time. Our dominant thoughts will dictate our life experience. Mm. So as you're watching this program, I just want you to stop and think for a moment. Think about what you're thinking about during the day. Mm. Say that again, Mike. Think about what you're thinking about during the day. Mm. Do that right now. Just kind of in your own minds, I think, hmm, what was I thinking today? Good, Mike. You know, because it's been said that most people repeat the same thoughts tomorrow that they had yesterday. Mm. That's good. So what we have to do is we have to inject something new so we're not thinking the same thing. And if it's negative, we definitely right. want to inject something positive. Okay? Yes. So remember that thoughts become things. Make sure that you pay attention to what you're thinking. So let's go on and go to number three. Number three. I'll turn that one over to you. Yes, sir. Number three is to begin a meditation practice. Mm. To begin a meditation practice. And this is where you set time aside to just enter to embrace what we would call the silence. Just that silent space that you turn the TV off, perhaps turn the music off. If you did have music, it could be nice music that for the purpose of meditation, it soothes you and allows you to enter into that place of stillness, that place of aloneness. And in that place, you really get to sit and reflect. And you shared about thinking about what we thought about. Well, in meditation, you definitely can take time to do just that, to kind of think about what you've been thinking about, as well as you could enter into meditation and not think about anything, to just really sit there and to just be, to just take a deep breath and to just relax and to just allow your inner being, your spirit to become still. And as I like to say it, it's like a still body of water. 
And from time to time, we have to have what I call a mental catharsis, just like a mental dump, mm -hmm. to just get rid of all that's perhaps going on at the point in time so that we can reflect, so that we can refresh, just like refreshing on a computer, and then we can relaunch back into the life experience. And I think to stay motivated, meditation helps us to do that. And it doesn't have to be 20 or 30 or 40 minutes. We would encourage you to at least start off with five minutes and call that me time, self time, refresh time, but just get along with self. And from that experience, you'll be so much stronger coming out of the experience that you begin to do it more and more and for longer periods of time. Now, there, for some people, there's a negative connotation to meditation. Uh, a lot of people see that as more of an Eastern philosophy. Right. I remember when I was a kid, my grandfather, who happened to be a very, very religious man, mm -hmm. and I remember he said that meditation was trafficking with the devil. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, let me just, let me simplify it. Meditation is really the process of simply listening to what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. In summary, that's what meditation is. It's about paying attention to what you're thinking. Because at any given moment, we've got two or three conversations going on in our head all the time. Yes. All the time. And so what meditation does is allow you to slow that chatter down, slow that thinking mind down. And as we start to slow it down, we begin to be, be able to pay attention mm -hmm. to what we're thinking. And it's not just an automatic reaction to everything. Right. So meditation, again, is really the process of paying attention to what you're thinking. And when you develop a meditation practice, what you want to do is, as, as Arthur mentioned, you want to set aside a specific amount of time at a specific time to begin this process. So it may be five minutes, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. Mm -hmm. Now, it takes rigor and mm -hmm. discipline to commit to doing this. But rest assured, if you commit to it, it will support you in getting to that point where you're in touch with that fire mm -hmm. that we talked about earlier, because that fire is there. I agree wholeheartedly. So that's number three. You want to begin a meditation practice. Number four, and author, we put up your book, Ignite the Fire Within. Mm -hmm. And so the fourth key, if you want to get and stay motivated, is what? To read motivational books. Absolutely. We are so inundated with negative information. Mm -hmm. It's important that we put in some positive information. Right. And so reading actually is a form of meditation, if you think about it. Because now you're focusing your thoughts, focusing your attention, absorbing what that person is sharing with you. Mm -hmm. So if what that person is sharing with you is negative, what happens. Thoughts become things. Mm -hmm. Negative input mm -hmm. creates negative output. Right. So if you're really committed to, if you're really, really, really committed to being motivated, you must put in positive information and a great resource for that, motivational books. Yeah. And there are hundreds and hundreds of them out there. Find someone that motivates you, mm -hmm. that you resonate with, and make a commitment to reading powerful, positive, motivational books. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly, Mike. And Will Smith had made a comment. He had won the Nickelodeon Award. And he was given his acceptance speech. And he gave two keys to success. And one of them was running and one was reading. Mm. And the reason he said running is because when you run on the track, at some point in time, there's going to be that little voice that's saying, stop. He says, if you continue to run in spite of that voice, You've now mastered yourself. Mm, and he wow. said reading as a second key is because you will never face a problem that someone has not faced and overcome and wrote about it. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to read what they wrote, you now have the answer to wow. your problem. Awesome. So he gave it as the two keys to success. And he had received the Nickelodeon Awards. So he was giving this to kids. Yeah. So I know if a kid can get it, sure. men can get it as well as everybody else. Absolutely. So let's go to number five. If you feel stuck and it feels as if your life isn't going anywhere, chances are 
you haven't set any goals to work towards. So key number five is to set goals. Now, it's been said that without vision, people perish. So if we personalize that, without goals, we stay stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> without goals, we stay stuck. So it's important that you set goals for yourself. And they can be small goals, they can be large goals. You have to determine what those goals are, but ultimately, you must be willing to set goals. Now, if you aren't writing down your goals, mm -hmm. you aren't setting goals. Mm -hmm. If you're just thinking in your head, you know, I'd really like to do this. The key is to write them down because I believe that once you start writing things down, the universe says, oh, this guy's serious. Mm -hmm. He's ready. So you have to make the commitment that you're going to write your goals down, whatever they are. A goal could be something as simple as saying, you know what, for the next week, I'm not going to be late for work. That's a goal. A goal could be, you know what, I want to write a book. You know, a goal could be, I want to find my life partner. Lots of goals out there. The question is, what are your goals? What is it that you want to accomplish in your life? If you aren't writing them down, chances are you will never, ever accomplish them. You know, there was a study done oh, a few years ago, and they had interviewed some entrepreneurs and successful people. Okay. And they were saying that the successful people, 80% of them always wrote down their goals. So, you've got to write down your goals, create a vision of that which you want. Because now you've got something to work towards. See, if you don't have any goals, you don't have anything to work towards, and then life becomes a drag. Right? It's the same thing over and over and over again. So, setting goals is going to challenge you and stretch you to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important to set goals. Yes, Mike. And I would say along the lines of, goals as I have shared in several of my workshops on goal setting and the power of goals and me and if you are watching this you will have an appreciation for this imagine watching a football game and there was no goal post <laughs> imagine watching a basketball game and there was no goal for the hoop for the ball to be shot in well there would be no way to truly measure who had won the game and with hop goals in life, there's no way to really measure where it is you're going with your life. And your goals should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And it will give direction and purpose to each and every day of your life because you now have something to wake up and work toward that's smart. And you will know that it's taking you to your chosen destination. And we can hit a goal that we've not set. So let's go to number six, and this, this follows that perfectly, is you have to start a journal. In other words, you're documenting, as I mentioned, writing down goals, but not only are you writing down the goals, if you really pay attention to what you're thinking while you're pursuing those goals, mm -hmm. you begin gaining a deeper understanding of yourself and what may be keeping you from accomplishing your goals. So I'm a huge proponent of journaling because as you're chasing these goals, obstacles are going to come up. You're going to have things that you're going to celebrate. Writing all those things down, I believe, are very, very important in attaining your goals. Yes, Michael, and it keeps you in the positive flow because in having the journal and having gratitude for what you've accomplished along the way yes. because as oftentimes say it's really not so much the goal that you're going after it's what you become in the process sure so as you become more thankful along the way you'll find out that you have more to be thankful for and by writing it down you have a mechanism in order to look and measure how far you've really come yeah one of the most profound things i've ever read is mary man and morrissey wrote a book mm -hmm. called building your field of dreams mm -hmm. And she talked about the importance of having dreams. Okay. And she said this. She says, 
while you're building your dream, you get to a point where you recognize that you thought you were building your dream, but your dream was building you. Yes. So when you're pursuing that goal or that dream, the person that you will have to become right. as a result of that is that's where you're going to grow. Exactly. And the person that you become, you have to become that person that's able to fulfill that dream. And that takes effort. And that's why it's so important to, set, to follow some of these tips right. so that you stay motivated to help you get to that point. Yes, I agree. So let's go to number seven. And if you want to you know, stay motivated, we talked about goal settings. A good idea is to create what's called a vision board. Because what you want to do is you want to begin in your imagination seeing the things that you want. Mm -hmm. So if your goal is to create a new company, mm -hmm. then on your vision board you could put a picture of an office building. And I say that because that's what I've done. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you put a picture of an office building and you imagine yourself in that office building running your company. Or maybe there's a car that you really like. You can Put a picture of that car. Or maybe there's that woman that you want to attract to your life. You get a picture of a woman that fits the criteria that you look for. So you start putting these pictures mm -hmm. in front of you. And your mind begins going, well, how can I create that? And then all of a sudden, the universe comes in and says, this is how you can do it. Mm -hmm. So it's important to create a vision board of the things that you want to accomplish in life. I agree, Mike. And it always allows you to see where it is you're going and what it is you're creating. Because oftentimes, you may not be able to come up with the true picture within yourself. But if you can find a representation mm. of that, yes. you now can have the picture come into you. Mm. And once it possesses you, as you stated, the universe begins to bring all the people, resources, talents, and things that are needed and necessary in order to bring that vision into form. Absolutely. Now, let's jump to number eight. And here's one that is personal to me. Okay. Because when I was a kid, I remember feeling alone and isolated a lot of times. And one of the places where I felt most safe mm -hmm. was in nature. Mm -hmm. And I actually had, in this wooded area next to our house, I had a little office space that I created. Okay. I had a little couch. I had a little desk. And I would pretend mm -hmm. that I was running a business mm -hmm. in this environment. Now, this was a seed that was planted in me when I was probably 10 years old. And so the point here is spending time in nature can really help clarify, clear out all that negative stuff that's going around. There's something about nature, I believe, that as human beings we're connected to. And so spending time in nature is a powerful way to relax, to connect, and refresh. Mm. Awesome. And I've got some of my best ideas. Yeah. Cutting the grass. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's nature. That's nature. That's nature. Exactly. That's without, you're a, nature. without a doubt, you become one with it, and it's in that space that it seems like your soul opens up, mm -hmm. and it's just ready to receive. Oh, beautiful! Absolutely beautiful. So that's number eight. Number nine. If you want to stay motivated, here's something that you must do: clean out the clutter in your life. We got a lot of clutter. Think about, just take your cell phone for example, and think about how much stuff is on your cell phone that you could probably clean out and give you more room on, on, your, on your phone or on your computer. But my point here is if you're carrying a lot of unnecessary weight in your life, you got to declutter. You got to get rid of it. Let go of those bad relationships. Mm -hmm. That's clutter. <laughs> you know, if you go home and you're stepping over stuff because your house is a mess, it's time to clean that up. You don't have to be a clean freak, but you want to when you get home, have that place as your sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And so you want to clean out any excess, excess clutter that may be in your life. Yes, Mike, and I wholeheartedly believe that because everything is energy. Mm -hmm. And where there is clutter, there is a constriction of energy. Energy cannot flow. As I love to say, success cannot get into crowded places. So when we clear away the clutter, when we clean our minds and everything else, well, there's just a free flow of energy. So now we can move into those places of motivation where we desire to be and where we desire to stay. Mm, beautiful. And last but not least, if you want to stay motivated, 
make time to have some fun. You see, I believe, especially as men, we are way too serious about life, about stuff. It's time to loosen up and have some fun. When was the last time you laugh until you cry? When was the last time that you felt that, that joyfulness, that playfulness that you had as a child? Well, the truth is, it's still in you. You just have to access it. Yes, and life was meant to be fun. Absolutely. That, uh, that, that really sums it up. That life was meant, life to, be was meant fun. to be fun. So, yes. so what we've just shared are 10 keys that I believe can support you in being motivated. I hope that this has been inspirational. Arthur, I want to thank you for spending a few minutes with us, sharing your wisdom, sure. and looking forward to having more shows with you. I want to give you an opportunity to close with any closing thoughts that you might have. Well, Mike, I just want to say once again, it's a pleasure to be here with you, to be here with the listening audience. It's always great to get together with you to be able to share. And it's been an awesome time for me, and I look forward to coming back again. Great. Well, again, I really love having you here. Really looking forward to some new episodes of A New Conversation with Men. And I want to close by saying that an extraordinary life is within your grasp, but it's your responsibility to grab it. So grab it. Take care. <laughs>